Hello YouTube Veggie Stereo Restorers and Appreciators and Listeners. I'm working on this TK66 classic from the late 60s. And I'm undoing some of the weird things that I found on it. This was owned by what I think was a tinkerer. Um, a couple weird things. This was the power cord. It was cut off right where it came out of the grommet. Somebody had radically shortened the power cord. So I had another one of these Kawasaki cords and I put it on there. Changing a few caps out. Of the four output transistors, they're TO3s, this one was shorted. And you can try to match them and just get one, but this is a vintage transistor. And what I did is I just ordered four new 2N3055s and matched up the lot numbers. And uh, that gives it fresh outputs because that's where the stress is on the unit. And instead of fuse lamps, it had these kind of soldered and taped in there. So I have fuse lamps in it. This was the non-working stereo indicator. Somebody replaced the bulb. And the way it was connected, it was, I don't know if you can see this, it was shorted right out. So it blew the transistor that drove it too. So I actually converted, I guess we can see it here. Right in there. Converted it to LED. And, uh, this odd jack was put on the back that said mono record with some really off-sized resistors um, basically taking output uh, from the record out jacks and merging it into one and I kind of wondered about this one because I thought when I was listening just to stuff through the amp that there was a bit of loss of stereo separation. It's the way this was set up. It was basically blending the channels together, so I got rid of that. Of course, there was a hole, and the hole was right where the UL Lab sticker was, so I just I printed out another one that's very similar to the original. Uh, something here about these. This heat sink arrangement is driven by this board. This board is in the KA2000, it's in the KA2500, the TK150, the TK250, some of the other receivers, I'm talking about this board here, there are six potentiometers on it. Protection circuit, center voltage, and the two over here are bias. And this is something I really have an issue with. Here they are, the originals. Okay. I've worked on stuff people have brought to me and they've said I have this professionally restored they put in these expensive whatever capacitors etc etc they redesigned the photo section etc etc but they left in these open style bias pots makes no sense they're unstable they move around in value with heat and they degrade these closed burn resistors, burn variable resistors, were actually will fit in the same hole. You gotta spread the, la the um, little legs and feet out on them. And they're much more stable. So I think that's like, that's something you should just automatically do. I'll change the one on this board to these here, set everything up again. That noise here outside is the garbage truck. Here is another odd thing. On top of this heat sink, which is the same heat sink as in the KA2500, somebody had moved the thermistors from the top, and you can actually see where they had been, to the bottom of the board, and both under the same clip and screw. Just, I don't know, just makes no sense. Like, the, the purpose of those thermistors is so here's your push-pull right here for one channel. It should be in the center somewhere and above the transistors. If they go in a thermal runaway, this picks it up and it backs the bias off. Then the other one will go right here. But they're both on this side, underneath the board, under the same clip. 
I don't know, it's just one of those odd modifications. Somebody was thinking something else that day. But what it was doing is I could not set the bias on these transistors. It was floating around like crazy. And uh, that's what you get into, especially if you leave the old pots in. So I just thought I'd give you a little update on that. A um, couple things. I've got a bunch of caps coming, so I'm going to recap all the boards. And they're those Elna, gray Elna caps. They're all over this thing and quite a few underneath. Restuff these. <laughs> There's four of them, so it'll take a few, few minutes on that. Um, and I'm still looking for a dual shaft volume control. And I seem to be running into this. The last KA2500 I did, it's the same volume control, same as on the KA2000. It feels really nice, but it's crackly and it's worn through. And I run into this Pioneer SA500, the Li429. Um, many of them, the Sui 210 receiver, they have this same Alps control, and there's just something about them, and it's always the left channel, which is kind of into left channel, it's the center one, the center track. Um, it's not bad once it's been cleaned up and lubed, but it, it will go crackly again, so I'm gonna replace that. They're just a little hard to find. There's actually on some forms, and if you look, you might see this yourself. Let's just spin it around here. Um, there is an Alps, a new Alps that's very similar to that control. That's the one right there. Sorry, hang on a second. Yeah, it's that one right there. But it doesn't have the loudness taps, and that is kind of important to the sound of this receiver. The loudness taps and the contour of this control. If you put in a straight control, and I've tried this on some, all of a sudden you've got a receiver that you got to keep turning it up and turning it up so you're three quarters of the way up before you actually get to any listenable volume. It has, this is a special audio taper. There are audio taper controls um, and then there's linear taper controls. The Alps one that would fit in here and the knobs would fit on is a linear taper so you end up up up. All of the sound is in the last third turn. And I just don't know if that would work on such a nice receiver. I'd rather leave the old one in. Anyway, um, oh, I'll just show you here quickly. Yeah, they were all under this screw here. The thermal sensors, the thermistors. So, they go over to this board. We'll do some more talk on this. I don't want to make the videos too long. Thanks for watching and listening.